1. USB USB is everywhere. Your keyboard, mouse, phone charger, external drive. If you've plugged something into a computer in the last 20 years, you've used USB. And the reason it won isn't because it was perfect. It's because it actually worked when everything else was chaos. The earliest versions, USB 1.0 and 1.1 from the late 1990s, topped out at 12 megabytes per second. Painfully slow by today's standards. But at the time, just being able to plug something in without rebooting the computer felt futuristic. Before USB, connecting a printer meant shutting down your entire PC, plugging in a massive parallel port cable, restarting, installing drivers from a CD, and praying. USB changed everything. Plug it in, and it just worked. USB 2.0 launched in 2000, raised speeds to 480 megabytes per second, and became the industry's long-term workhorse. That's why keyboards, mice, webcams, and office gear still use it today. These devices don't need racing tires to walk to the mailbox. USB 2.0 ports are usually black. Then came USB 3.0 in 2008, jumping to 5 gigabytes per second. That's when external hard drives stopped feeling like they were transferring files via carrier pigeon. These ports are typically blue. USB 3.1 doubled speeds to 10 gigabytes per second, and USB 3.2 pushed it up to 20 gigabytes per second. Unfortunately, this is where USB's naming system completely fell apart. USB 3.0 became USB 3.1 Gen 1, then USB 3.2 Gen 1. Same port, same speed, three different names. If USB had a villain, it would be its own branding department. Port colors help sometimes. Blue usually signals USB 3.x. Red or yellow often means high power or sleep charging, letting you charge devices while the PC is off. But none of this is strictly enforced, so trust the specs more than the paint job. Connector shapes evolve too. USB-A is the familiar rectangle still everywhere. USB-B, Mini-B, and Micro-B once ruled printers, cameras, and early smartphones. Micro-USB especially stuck around long enough that everyone owns at least three broken cables. That era ended with USB-C, reversible, compact, and extremely capable. USB-C can handle data, video, and power through one cable. Depending on the version, it supports anything from basic USB 2.0 speeds all the way up to USB 4 at 40 gigabytes per second, with power delivery reaching 240 watts. The reason USB survived every transition is simple. Backward compatibility. Plugging a USB 2.0 device into a USB 4 port still works. It just runs slower. 2. USB-C versus Thunderbolt This is where things get confusing for almost everyone, and honestly, it's not your fault. USB-C and Thunderbolt look identical, use the same cable shape, and plug into the same port. But under the hood, they are very different things. Here's the key idea that clears everything up. USB-C is just the shape of the connector. Thunderbolt is the technology behind it. That's it. Once you understand that, the fog starts to lift. A USB-C port might support basic USB speeds, fast USB speeds, video output, charging, or all of them. Or none of the good stuff. Thunderbolt, on the other hand, is a premium standard developed by Intel, with Apple early on, that guarantees very high performance every time. Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 both run at 40 gigabytes per second, which is four times faster than standard USB 3.2. That's enough bandwidth to run two 4K monitors at 60 Hz, ultra-fast external SSDs, and even external graphics cards through a single cable. Yes, a laptop can suddenly gain desktop-level GPU power, assuming your wallet survives the eGPU enclosure. Thunderbolt 5, introduced in 2024, pushes this even further, with 80 GB bi-directional bandwidth and up to 120 GB in display-heavy setups. It also supports up to 240 watts of power delivery, enough to charge high-end workstations over one cable. At this point, the cable is doing more work than most office PCs from 2010. Another big Thunderbolt advantage is daisy-chaining. You can connect a monitor to a monitor, to a dock, to storage, all from one Thunderbolt port. USB-C alone usually can't do this reliably. So how do you tell them apart? Look for the lightning bolt icon next to the port. No lightning bolt, no Thunderbolt, no matter what cable you use. And yes, a Thunderbolt cable plugged into a regular USB-C port will behave like plain USB. It won't magically unlock extra speed. Here's a real example. You buy a $200 Thunderbolt dock expecting 40 gigabytes per second transfer speeds for your external SSD. You plug it into your laptop's USB-C port. It works, but your 1000 megabytes per second SSD is crawling at 300 megabytes per second. Why? 
that port only supports USB 3.2 Gen 1, 5 gigabytes per second instead of the 40 gigabytes per second the dock was built for. You're getting about 30% of the speed you paid for. Same shape, completely different compatibility. That's the USB-C trap. This confusion exists because Thunderbolt uses the USB-C shape, but not every USB-C port supports Thunderbolt. Same plug, different brain. That's why some laptops feel mysteriously limited and others feel unbelievably flexible. The difference isn't the cable, it's what's hiding behind that port. 3. Video Ports Video ports are where specs start to matter a lot, especially if you game, edit, or just spend good money on a high refresh rate monitor and want to actually use it. HDMI is the most common video port on the planet. TVs, consoles, laptops, monitors, everything has it. Early versions like HDMI 1.4 supported 4K at 30Hz, which looked sharp but felt sluggish. HDMI 2.0 fixed that with 4K at 60Hz, making it the baseline standard for years. The current heavyweight is HDMI 2.1, which supports 4K at 120Hz or even 8K at 60Hz, along with features like variable refresh rate for smoother gaming. HDMI is simple, reliable, and designed mainly for one device, one display. DisplayPort is HDMI's more technical cousin and a favorite in the PC world. DisplayPort 1.2 already handled 4K at 60Hz, 1.4 pushed higher refresh rates with HDR, and DisplayPort 2.0 goes far beyond what most people need, supporting up to 80 gigabytes per second bandwidth for extremely high resolutions and refresh rates. DisplayPort's killer feature is daisy chaining, letting you connect multiple monitors from a single port, something HDMI generally can't do. That's why multi-monitor desks almost always rely on DisplayPort. Then there are the older ports. VGA is the blue connector that carries analog video only. It technically reached 1080p, but the image was often blurry and audio needed a separate cable. DVI came later and was digital, offering a sharper picture, but it still didn't carry audio and quickly got stuck between generations. Both VGA and DVI are largely obsolete, but they still appear in offices, schools, and projectors that refuse to retire. You'll also see mini HDMI and mini DisplayPort on cameras, laptops, and compact devices. Same standards, smaller connectors. In short, HDMI dominates living rooms, DisplayPort rules PC setups, and VGA DVI exist mainly to remind us how far displays have come. Quick question, how many of you have bought a 144Hz gaming monitor only to realize months later you were still using an HDMI 1.4 cable capped at 60Hz? Don't leave me hanging in the comments. And if this video just saved you from that exact mistake, hit the like button. It genuinely helps. 4. Audio Ports That round hole you've been plugging headphones into since around 2005? That's the 3.5mm audio jack and it somehow survived smartphones removing it, laptops thinning out, and wireless everything. Simple, cheap, and reliable. It refuses to die. Originally, computers used two separate jacks, one for headphones and one for microphones. These used TRS connectors, which have three metal rings and can carry either audio output or a mic signal, but not both at the same time. That's why older PCs had a green port for sound and a pink one for your mic. Modern laptops usually combine everything into one jack using TRRS connectors. These have four rings, allowing audio output and microphone input through a single port. This is why phone-style headsets work on newer laptops, but sometimes don't work at all on older desktops without an adapter. When the mic suddenly goes silent, it's usually not broken hardware. It's the connector standard arguing with your PC. And yes, that 3.5mm jack has been declared dead approximately 47 times. Apple removed it from iPhones in 2016, and every tech blog wrote eulogies. But here we are in 2025, and it's still on most laptops, gaming headsets, and studio equipment. Why? Because it works instantly. Needs no charging, no pairing, no Bluetooth dropouts, just plug and go. Turns out obsolete technology that actually works beats innovative technology that doesn't. Desktop systems often still use color-coded audio ports. Green is front speakers or headphones. Pink is microphone input. Blue is line-in. Higher-end boards add more colors for 5.1 or 7.1 surround sound, which looks intimidating but is just audio channels being split across multiple jacks. For home theater setups, there's SPDIF, also called optical audio. It uses a fiber optic cable to send digital audio without electrical interference. This is common on soundbars, AV receivers, and older high-end motherboards. It's excellent for clean audio, but it doesn't support modern gaming features like positional audio the way HDMI can. The key takeaway? 
Most audio problems aren't software bugs, they're cable and connector mismatches. And once you know TRS versus TRRS, a lot of why doesn't my mic work moments suddenly make sense. Number 5. Ethernet Ethernet is the port that looks like a fat phone jack, and that comparison actually helps. It's wider, deeper, and has more pins because it's doing a lot more work. This is the RJ45 port, and it's how your computer talks directly to your router using a cable instead of radio waves. The biggest reason Ethernet still exists in a Wi-Fi world is latency. With Wi-Fi, your data has to be converted into a wireless signal, sent through the air, fought through walls, devices, and interference, then get converted back into data again. Ethernet skips all of that. It's a straight, wired connection. That's why gamers, streamers, and anyone doing live work prefer it. Your inputs feel instant, and your connection stays stable. Your internet speed might look the same on paper, but Ethernet feels faster because the delay is lower and more consistent. In competitive gaming, this isn't theory. It's measurable advantage. A wired Ethernet connection typically adds 1 to 3 milliseconds of latency. Wi-Fi? 20 to 50 milliseconds, sometimes spiking higher. In games like Counter-Strike or Valorant, where pros react in under 200 milliseconds, that extra delay is the difference between winning and spectating. Ethernet also comes in clear speed tiers. Fast Ethernet tops out at 100 megabytes per second and is mostly obsolete. Gigabit Ethernet or 1 gigabyte per second is the modern standard and what most desktops, laptops, consoles, and routers support today. Higher end systems go further with 2.5 gigabit, 5 gigabit, or even 10 gigabit Ethernet, which are common in workstations, servers, and high speed home networks. The cable matters too. Cat 5E handles gigabit just fine, while Cat 6 and above support higher speeds more reliably. Those little blinking lights on the Ethernet port actually mean something. One usually shows link activity, data moving, while the other can indicate connection speed. If the light is off or constantly blinking in a strange way, it's often a cable or port issue, not your internet provider. Ethernet isn't flashy, but when reliability matters, it's still the gold standard. 6. Power Charging Ports Power ports are where modern laptops confuse people the most, so let's start with the big one. USB-C Charging Not every USB-C port can charge a laptop. They all look identical, but only ports that support USB-C power delivery, or PD, can actually push serious power. USB-C PD ranges from 15 watts for phones and accessories, 45 to 65 watts for ultrabooks, and up to 100 watts or even 240 watts on newer systems. If a USB-C port doesn't support PD or supports a lower wattage, it simply won't charge a laptop, no matter how expensive the cable is. Some manufacturers print a battery icon next to the charging capable ports. Some print nothing at all, just a blank USB-C port that either charges your laptop or doesn't, and you won't know until you try. Next is the classic DC in barrel jack. This has been the standard laptop power connector for decades. It's simple, reliable, and designed to deliver exactly the wattage that laptop needs. The downside? Every manufacturer used slightly different sizes, so borrowing a charger was always a gamble. Plugging in the wrong one either didn't work or worked just long enough to worry you. Then there's MagSafe, Apple's magnetic charging connector. It snaps into place and pops right off if someone trips over the cable. This single feature has saved countless MacBooks from dramatic falls off desks. It's one of those ideas that seems obvious after someone invents it. Apple brought it back recently because, yeah, it was actually that good. Finally, the thick black power cable you unplug from a desktop, PC, or monitor is officially called an IEC C13 cable connecting to a C14 port. It's universal, durable, and found everywhere from gaming PCs to office printers. Number 7. Specialty and Expansion Ports These are the ports people see every day, rarely use, and almost never know the name of. But once you know what you're looking for, they suddenly make sense. Mini DisplayPort looks like a smaller, squared-off version of DisplayPort. Apple popularized it years ago on MacBooks before switching to USB-C. Functionally, it works just like DisplayPort and can drive high-resolution monitors, but today it mostly survives on older laptops and professional displays. If you still have one, it's not useless, it's just from a different era. SD card slots are a quiet favorite for photographers, videographers, and anyone working with cameras. Full-size SD cards are common on laptops, while micro SD cards show up more on tablets and compact devices. Speed matters here. Basic cards are fine for photos. But video work relies on UHS-1 or UHS-2 speeds to avoid painfully slow transfers. If your laptop has a fast SD reader, it can save you from carrying extra adapters. Then there's the Kensington lock slot, that small rectangular hole on the side of some laptops. 
It's for a physical cable lock that attaches your laptop to a desk or heavy object. It won't stop a determined thief, bolt cutters make quick work of the cable, but it prevents the casual laptop left unattended for 30 seconds grab in coffee shops, libraries, or airports. Think of it like a bike lock. Not unbreakable, but annoying enough to make thieves pick an easier target. Some laptops also include SIM card trays, allowing built-in cellular data. These machines can connect to 4G or 5G networks without Wi-Fi, turning them into always online devices for travel or field work. It's common in business laptops, rare in consumer ones, and incredibly useful if you need the internet everywhere. Finally, there are docking connectors. Older laptops used proprietary docks, while modern systems rely on USB-C or Thunderbolt docks to add ports, displays, ethernet, and power with a single cable. Number 8. Legacy Ports – The Survivors These are the ports that refuse to disappear. They're outdated, technically inferior, and yet still everywhere. VGA is the easiest to recognize. The blue connector with screws carried analog video only. VGA stuck around for so long because it was universal. Projectors, classrooms, offices, and conference rooms all relied on it. DVI came next and improved things by switching to a digital signal. It delivered a much cleaner image than VGA and supported higher resolutions, but it still didn't carry audio. PS2 ports The round purple and green ones were once standard for keyboards and mice. They're technically faster and more reliable than USB for input devices, which is why some high-end motherboards still include them. They're not convenient, but they are consistent, and that's why they've survived in enthusiasts and industrial systems. Serial and parallel ports are true relics. These were used for printers, modems, and specialized equipment long before USB existed. And that's every computer port explained. From USB-A that you've been flipping upside down for 20 years, to Thunderbolt 5 pushing 120 gigabytes per second through a cable thinner than your pinky finger. Now, if you're ready to actually buy cables, adapters, or hubs and want to skip the endless review rabbit hole, I've got you covered. In the description below, I've linked to the best rated options for USB-C hubs, Thunderbolt cables, HDMI adapters, all organized so you're not drowning in 47 identical looking products with fake reviews. Now here's the thing, you just learned about USB-A, USB-C, and all these different port shapes. But what about USB 2.0, USB 3.0, USB 3.2 Gen 2X2? All those confusing version numbers? Because knowing the port shape doesn't tell you if you're getting 480 megabytes per second or 40 gigabytes per second. That's exactly what we covered in every USB type explained. All the generations, all the speeds, all the naming disasters, broken down so you actually understand what you're plugging in. Click the video on screen right now, and don't forget to subscribe. Because if ports made sense after this video, you'll want the rest of your tech to make sense too. I'll see you there.